one thing real quick. You know, the choir works real hard, and they're looking out there to see what, see kind of how you react. Yeah. Are any of y'all saved? If you're saved, raise your hand for me right now. If you would do that while they sing one or two of these songs, it would make an amazing difference. But they're looking at y'all like, well, can you, can you impress me tonight? Can you wake me up from sleeping all afternoon? I'm just wondering. Y'all ought to be saying amen, and then get them fired up. If you're just going to stare at them, well, we could just have practice and wouldn't make no difference if y'all with us or not. And I love y'all. Yeah, you know I do, don't you? Come on, let's 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 encourage them just a little bit, okay? If you'll just do one, just do this one time. Somebody'd stand up and just say Amen. Pray for us. These are new songs. They, they're scared to death. Tiffany almost resigned two minutes ago, right before the service got started, with all the stuff we've got going on. Lord's been good to us. We're preparing for Jubilee. If there's a word or two you like, say Amen. Just There is a blood that cost a life that paid my
precious blood. Page 473, Victory in Jesus. First and last, as the choir comes down on the line. Visitors felt welcome, all right? Everybody welcome our visitors.
want to welcome each and every one of you here tonight to the Sunday evening service here at Mountain View Baptist Church. We're delighted to be back in the Lord's house. They're going to get their music together. I want to commend the adult choir, our choir leader, for working diligently and faithfully learning these new songs. And you know they were new, but they were a blessing. Amen. They were a blessing. So thank the Lord. This crowd practiced yesterday afternoon for about an hour and 45 minutes, and then Brother Finley fed them, uh, or the church did anyway. But uh, So uh, they got a new one tonight, trying to get things ready for the upcoming Jubilee. But right now we want to have special prayer for Brother Paul Wallace. We'll have heart surgery Tuesday. And we have a man in our church, a lot of you don't, uh, you're not aware of this, Brother Curtis Brown is in the hospital at Mary Black Hospital, and he's got a blood clot in his leg, and they need to get that dissolved so it doesn't move. And if you know anything about medical issues, you know if it moves, you've got some major problems going on. So right now, I want you to bow your heads. Let's close our eyes. And there's many other requests, but these are and Brother Baskin's surgery as well. Brother David, if you'll go to the throne of grace with us, please. Dear God, Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, thank you for being back in your house again. Lord, thank you for the great time we had in your house this morning, dear God, Lord. We pray for Brother Paul Wallace, dear God, Lord, the surgery would go great. We've got the doctor's minds in their hands. We'll let them do what needs to be done. Lord, help his wife to continue to get better. We'll pray for Brother Kurt tonight, dear God. Pray that the medicine would dissolve that in his leg, Lord. He won't have any issue from it, Lord. Touch him in a mighty way, dear God, Lord. Brother Paul's sister, Angie, pray that you'd help her with the cancer she's facing, dear God, Lord. Brother Doug Pye, Lord, his shoulder. Pray that you touch and help in that situation, dear God, Lord. The other ones we can't remember right now, pray that you have you willing to wait it, dear God. We'll pray for the Jubilee coming up, dear God, Lord. Pray that we have a great time in your house. Great services, great men of God preaching, dear God, Lord. Show yourself around here, dear God, that we live closer to you like you'd have us to, dear God. Lord, we pray for Brother Williams tonight. You'd lose him tonight. Lord, lose his mind. Let him say what needs to be said tonight, dear God, Lord. Lord, let him preach like hell's in the front yard. The devil's on the doorstep, dear God, Lord. Some fall lost soul to get saved before it's everlasting too late tonight, dear God, Lord. Use them in a mighty way, Lord, if we get our life straight for you. Do what you'd have us do to live for you all the days of our life. In Jesus, my prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. All right, this is our youth choir. I do want to welcome. Evangelist Dana Williams, his precious wife, right here. Such an honor to have them tonight. I can honestly say I'd rather, as I would assume, listen to this man as any man that I've ever heard in the pulpit. And I'm looking forward, I'm looking so forward to having Brother Dana preach for us in just a little bit. All right? This is our youth choir.
how many of you tonight would honestly say and sincerely in your heart that God is worthy of praise? Amen. And by the way, we're 1,000 years behind on that. Thank you, uh, adult choir. Thank you, youth choir. We're going to try to find some more time, maybe a short Sunday night service, another maybe a Wednesday night service. We're going to give over to let these groups get together. It just takes time. you got to rehearse. you got to go over this stuff. And we appreciate it. And we're going to look for some more time slots for everybody, all right? Come on, ushers. We'll get the regular time and the regular offering. I want you to give us unto the Lord. If you're visiting with us tonight, thank you for being here. And may God bless you. And to our membership, I'd like to say that you're more than welcome to get involved in either choir, all right? Either choir. No sense in sitting out there and not wanting to do something. If you want to do something, you just see one of these choir leaders, and I know they'll uh, 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 facilitate you to be involved, all right? God bless you. The ushers are going to serve you. They have bulletin. They have baby bottles if anybody needs those for the Cherokee Pregnancy Center. Play for it, Tippy. Jared, step up here and pray with us, if you will. Tiffany, thank you for all the practice and the playing. I know it's kind of stressful. I know it is. I know it's stressful, but thank you. And all you other musicians on this side, Jada, all you others, thank you so much for using your talents, not for men, but for the glory of God. Amen. For the glory of God. Uh, Brother Josiah mentioned in the prayer room, and he, he's involved in government, this one behind me, and Brother Josiah and Brother Stephen Long, you know, we're very possibly looking at even this week, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Uh, that may happen. It's not going to outlaw abortion. It's going to put it right back in the states' hand. That's really what's going to happen. But if that does happen, you can look for this country to go absolutely stark raving crazy. And uh, we're going to keep out there what we have on the sign. And by the way, we're not ashamed of that message. You're not, you need to stop before you go out and read all four or five of those clips that Brother Landon put up about abortion. We believe that life begins at conception. Amen. We believe that with all of our heart. We, I know you do. And I appreciate uh, the men that are involved in government here at our church. And may God bless you as you continue to serve in that capacity. Brother Jared, pray for us and dedicate the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure love you. We thank you for loving us, dear Lord. Thank you for saving us, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight, dear Lord. Thank you for living in a country where we can still do this, dear Lord. Thank you we go to a church that will still take a stand, dear Lord, be an example for a lost and dying world. Dear Lord, we thank you for these tithes and offerings, dear Lord. Thank you for that. Pray that you'd help you man of God as he comes to preach tonight, dear Lord. Loosen his tongue. Give him liberty tonight, dear Lord. Make him feel comfortable behind this pulpit, dear Lord. We love you. Thank you for all you've done in the service already. Pray that you'd continue to move with us here tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. They're going to sing one. 
Then we're going to have the preacher. He can take all the time he needs. We want to give him plenty of time. And then after we dismiss, we're going immediately to the fellowship hall and uh, having a big shower for Miss Jada Spencer. She's having a baby girl. And they wanted me to announce they have hamburgers, hot dogs, all the trimmings, plus all the other sandwiches, the desserts. Uh, maybe it's a soup or two over there. So everybody, everybody's more than welcome to stay for the time of fellowship after the service tonight. Here's a new trio that got together a while back, and they're going to sing one for us, and we're going to have the preacher. If you ask me, are there reasons I shouldn't be saved? I'd say, well, there is plenty. And if you ask me how the reasons he shouldn't have heard me pray, well, I'd say there's plenty. And if you ask me, have there been times that I've walked away and let temptation lead me astray? If you're asking, then I'd have to say there's been plenty. But there's been plenty, plenty of times he's, he's picked me up and wiped my tears away. There's been plenty, plenty of times he gently reminds me my sins have been washed away. That I failed the Lord, but He has yet to ever fail me. If you're asking if He's been faithful, then I'd say plenty. If you're asking, have I been through many valleys? I'd say, well, there is plenty. And if you ask me, have I had many hard times? I'd have to say there's been plenty. And if you ask me, have I had friends and family walk off and even betray me? If you're asking, well, then I'd have to say there's been plenty. But there's been plenty of times. He's picked me up and wiped my tears away. And there's been plenty of times He gently reminds me my sins have been washed away. And there's been plenty of times that I failed the Lord yet to ever fail me. Asking if He been faithful, then I'd say plenty. But there's been plenty of times he's picked me up and wiped my tears away. And there's been plenty of times he gently reminds me my sins have been washed away. times that I failed the Lord that he has yet to ever fail me so if you're asking if he's been faithful then I'd say plenty so if you're asking if he's been faithful then I'd say plenty Miss Malia back here, and I know Shelby helped today. Thank you, Shelby, and maybe one or two others. I'm sorry, I don't know all the names, but getting all that shower stuff ready. Work yesterday, work today. Appreciate you getting everything ready for us. You'll be able to enjoy that tonight. Let's get our Bibles in our hand, everybody. Let's give them undivided attention, undivided attention, all right? Always realize we have four, five, or six, or seven men at the doors. That's why they're not in here keeping us secure. We have one or two ladies in the nursery. We appreciate them doing that. All the things there is around here, you're able to get involved in, and we want you to do that, all right? This evangelist, Dana Williams, we love him. Thank God he worked it out. He could be with us on this Sunday night, all right? Let's hear him well while he preaches God's Word. God bless you, Brother Dana. Amen, Turn brother. Down the mic. All right. 
Let me adjust this mic. I'm not quite as tall as your pastor. Of course, I'm bigger than what I thought I was. I went to the doctor the other day, and they got them charts, you know, to tell you how tall you're supposed to be according to your weight. They said, according to them charts, I'm supposed to be six foot four. (laughs) So I didn't realize that. Good to be back. We always enjoy coming this way. What a blessing, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I love the energy of your pastor. Uh, I believe he's going to heaven, don't you? I'm just scared he's going to run by it, and they're going to have to catch him and bring him back. <laughs> what, a, what a precious uh, pastor and wife, and uh, we just enjoy uh, coming over this way and enjoying all this great music. I'm telling you, you'd have to be an evangelist to appreciate your music. I was in a meeting one time that all the music they had was a dear old saint, precious lady, played the organ 15 minutes before I got up to preach. Now, I like organ music, but she worked for the funeral home. And, uh, I mean, that's a true story. She is dead the time I got up, I guarantee you that. But I love it when folks uh, sing, they love to sing, and they can sing. And the Lord's put it in their hearts to sing. I had one preacher tell me, he had a lady come to him on Sunday morning and said, why didn't you let my husband sing? He said, well, because he can't. He said, it ain't supposed to hurt. (laughs) Well, I tell you, this kind of music doesn't hurt. Let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Mark, chapter number 15 and and, uh, chapter number 16. We'll read a uh, few verses there. I love to go back to churches and see how everybody's aging. And you're all doing fairly well. You know, there are four stages to aging that applies to everybody here. Four stages. The first one, you start out believing in Santa Claus. Then you get old enough to where you don't believe in Santa Claus. Then you get married, have youngins, you become Santa Claus. And then you start looking like Santa Claus. (laughs) Somebody told me the other day, he said, you look like Santa. I said, that's ridiculous. He was short, fat, and gray-headed. I can't even see the resemblance there. I want us to look here in the Word of God again. uh, Thank you, Brother Steve, for the opportunity to be able to come over. I want us to uh, look, if you will, in chapter number 15. This is the crucifixion of Christ. You know all that it entailed, this They took him to Golgotha and crucified him, and uh, they mocked him, and darkness came over the land. He cries out in verse 34, Elihu, Elihu, Lema Sabathani, which is interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, He cries in verse 37 with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Then look in verse number 40. And there were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the less and of Joseph and Salome, who also when he was in Galilee followed him and ministered unto him. And many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem, They saw it all, and the Holy Ghost recorded that they watched it come to pass. Look in verse number 47. Of course, Joseph of Arimathea uh, goes, inquires about the body, gets it, and uh, takes that body and lays it in the sepulcher, the Bible said in verse number 46. Verse 47, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he lay. Uh, They saw on his death, they saw his burial. They stayed through the whole ordeal. That had to be hard. A woman's heart is so tender. They had sold out to Christ. They had given up their life for his. They believed that he was their king, their Messiah. 
their Lord. They believe he had come to change the world. But now in these few short hours, they watch him being crucified. Totally watched it all. But that wasn't the end of it. Look at in verse 1 of chapter 16. <laughs> They're still there. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they come unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, <laughs> clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. He saith unto them, Be ye not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. They knew that. They watched it. They watched him being buried. But now they're getting the news because they're on the spot. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay him. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and they wept. My heart has rested upon these ladies during the time, the dark hours of the crucifixion of their Lord and their King. They were mothers in this mix. They certainly were ladies. And the scripture tells us that they ministered unto him. They watched him as the blood dripped from his back and he's led to Golgotha with a cross. They watched as they lay him on that cross and they could hear the sound of the nails being driven in. They listened to the mockery of all of the religious crowd, the soldiers and those that were there. It would seem as though that this hour was as horrible as any hour could be. They heard his voice when he cried out to his father and they saw him give up the ghost. The thing that is a Astonishing to me is how they remained through every bit of it. It looks as though at one point or a time they would have said, I can't watch this anymore. This is more than I can handle. Their dreams had been shattered. Danger was everywhere. All the others, with the exception of John, had gone. No one was left. They didn't seem to be able to make a difference. Their tears and their remaining was not going to change the outcome. You would think it would only hurt. It would only hurt worse to remain there through it all. All of the sounds that they hear. All of the suffering that they see. All of the sarcasm that they face. 
a simple title for the sermon tonight that comes from these ladies and would apply to all of us is this. What is it that keeps us hanging around? When it seems as though we're looking at the end, when the devil is screaming out it is all over, and it seems as though that the whole world is against you. And you stand there in your own weakness realizing and yet not comprehending what is coming to pass in your life. But yet somehow you just keep on hanging around. I was saved 53 years ago. As a 17-year-old boy, in those days, prophecy was being preached a lot. Some of it stretched. But it got my mind on Daniel's 70th week and Jeremiah and all those other things. So as a 17-year-old boy, I decided, you know, I'm going to get in there and study that out for myself. So I delved into the scriptures on the thought of the second coming of the Lord. And I came to the conclusion now. Here's what I can, I, I figured I could figure it out. I came to the conclusion that not the day nor the hour, but I thought surely I could nail down the year. <laughs> so I studied it all out. And I don't remember how I got to my formula, but I came up with the conclusion that the Lord would have to come. Now this is in 1970. I figured he'd have to come back before 1973. Aren't you glad he didn't? How many of you have been saved since 1973? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in charge of all of that. And of course, once that all came to pass, what I figured is I'm done with prophecy. All I know is he's coming. <laughs> and I'm glad he is. But I'm glad to report to you that after 53 years, it's not all, I mean, it's not all been a bed of roses. There have been some troubles and hard roads and dark times, but I'm here to report to you, I'm still hanging around. And I love to go places time after time after time and see faces that have got the scars of time on their face and they've been through some hardships, but I can tell from their spirit and looking into their eyes, they're still hanging around. I don't know what's coming our way as far as this world. I don't know what this government's going to bring on us, but honey, what I plan on doing is hanging around. It wasn't if they could make a difference. It wasn't if they could change a thing. But oh, they hung around. It's a blessed thing just when you can't. It seems as though there's nothing you can do. Just hang in there. Keep preaching. Keep praying. Keep singing. Keep worshiping. Keep going to the house of God. Just hang around. Three simple things. What is it that kept them hanging around? First of all, I would say to you, they kept hanging around. Do you see them there at the cross? Do you see them there at the tomb? Do you see them? That they, saw the, they saw the whole shebang. But I'm here to tell you, they kept hanging around because they couldn't get over what he had put in them. Truth of the matter is, Jesus died, did he not? He was literally dead when they brought him off that cross. He was dead as any man ever died when they put him in that tomb and sealed it. They knew beyond any shadow of doubt that the Son of God was deceased, that he had given up the spirit but I'm going to tell you this while he was dead and in the tomb <laughs> there was something on the inside of them that was still alive <laughs> he was buried but there was something in them that just wouldn't die 
While it did not seem reasonable for them to continue, it did not seem sensible for them uh, to remain, it did not seem practical for them to stay. I'm sure others encouraged them, now it's time to give all this up. You put so much into it, go back home, get over it, pick up with your life where it was, and move on. And they said, well, I would if I could, but there's something in me that still wants to minister to him. There's something in me that still who wants to go and serve him. There's something in me I can't help it. I just got to hang around. I got to stay by him. I don't care what's going on. I've got to. There's something big on the inside that won't die. I'm glad when he saved me, thank God, he brought all the heaven in me that would withstand all the hell. And no matter what would happen, it would that hard of God would keep on bumping so I could keep on preaching and keep on singing and keep on praying and keep on hanging around. I heard a preacher say years ago that he was driving out west in the desert. He noticed in a distance what looked like to be a man moving the lever on a pump, and water was coming out of that pump in the desert. And uh, so he decided he wanted to see what it was all about, and they had a place there where you could pull over and observe it, and he did so. The closer he got to it, he realized that it wasn't a live person. It was a, like a mannequin in which the joints and the arms moved. And the joint in that arm was moving up and down, holding on to that handle to that pump. And he still wondered what brought that water out. And he walked up a little closer and it said, an artesian well. He said, that's when I realized the man wasn't pumping the water, the water was pumping the man. Oh, I'm going to tell you, Christ in you is the hope of glory. All of the energy of heaven operating on the inside. He had put something in these ladies with his very person that would, he may be dead for now, but they're much alive. I'm glad for the saints that are still hanging around because they really have something. What is it that keeps me hanging around? It is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. These ladies are hanging around because they can't get over what he's put in them. Now go to chapter 16 and verse number 9, if you will. The Bible said, now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Woo! What is it that keeps them hanging around? They can't get over what he's put in them, and they can't get over what he took out of them. Salvation is God putting something in you and taking something out of you. And I remember when he saved me, thank God, he came in and he run the devil out and he run the darkness out. And here is Mary Magdalene that has experienced a miracle. I mean, she has experienced a marvelous work, a miraculous work. She has experienced a multiplied, not just one devil, but many devils being she has been delivered. Someone would say to her, Mary, why don't you just guide these ladies and head on back home? She said, no, I can't because of what he's put in me and I can't because of what he's took out of me. And thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. I preached here enough for you to know my past. Raised in a drunkard's home without a mother. Dad never remarried. Our first language was foul language because no one there to teach us any different. Nine of us youngins and I was the least. 
Stealing wasn't bad unless you got caught. And, uh, you know, just that lifestyle that, that we had lived for, I had for 13 years of my life. But I'm going to tell you something on that day when the Lord saved me. When I laid my head on my pillow, I realized when I hadn't even heard any preaching about it, he had put peace in me. He had put love in me. I could feel joy in me. I knew there was something big working on the inside. But yet at the same time, I realized he took something out of me. There was things that I did all the time I didn't want to do all the time. There was things I had said before I didn't want to say. I mean, he had changed my world from the inside out. I Aren't you glad for what he put in you? Aren't you glad, thank God, for what he took out of you? They're hanging around because they can't get over what he has put in them. He can't get over. They can't get over what he's took out of them. Aren't you glad that salvation is a two-part work of God? Putting in and taken out. And I'd hate to think he'd have gave me a little package of religion and said, now go and practice these things and do the best you can. But no, he put Christ in me to live through me. And thank God Christ in me has pushed so many things out of me to make a different person out of me so that I, no matter what happens, am able to hang around. Just keep hanging around. Can you imagine these ladies through all the terror of this dark night hanging around? They got life in them. They got something in them. Something's been taken out. But then I want to say to you lastly that what is it that keeps these women hanging? Same thing keeps you hanging around. Folks that have to be motivated and pushed and pulled ain't got nothing to working on the inside. Oh, folks that just keep on doing the same old thing ain't had some things taken out of them. Well, I'm glad he did that work on these ladies. And I'm glad he does that work on all of us, aren't you? What is it keeps them hanging around? I tell you, they can't get over what he put in them. They can't get over what he took out of them. I'm going to tell you thirdly, the reason why they hung around is because God wasn't going to let them get over what he was going to do through them. In other words, God wasn't done. Now, at times in your life, it may look like that you're at the end of the road, that there's a period to what you're going through. But I tell you, children, no matter what it is, just remain faithful. Just stay with the stuff. Just keep on hanging around because I want you to know that as long as the church is in this world, God is not done. He is not finished with you. He's got a work to do. That's why you're here and that's why I'm here. These ladies, they're hanging around. <laughs> They hung around at the cross, at the crucifixion. They hung around at the, at the tomb, at the burial. And thank God they hung around until resurrection day came. They witnessed the end, thank God, of what they had saw the beginning. He's up, thank God. He is alive. Now I'm going to tell you something. I hate secondhand information about something exciting. I hate to have to be told about something that I could have been there and I could have seen it. Now you got all these other fellas, they run off. So they got no clue as to what's happening. But oh, in the wee hour of the morning, here comes these same ladies. They're looking for Jesus in that tomb. Guess what? He ain't there. He's risen. But listen to this. He may not be there in that tomb, but thank God he's there 
where they're at. He reveals himself. On that day, they saw appearances. They saw angels, and they were given, thank God, a job or an accomplishment. He called them. He said, listen, you see what you see, and you know what you know that nobody else knows at this point that somebody else needs to hear, so you get out there and tell everybody that you hung around long enough to say what was going on. And they went and told the disciples and the apostles said, hey, we, we, he ain't dead. He's alive. They said, well, how do you know that? They said, we hung around long enough to see it. We watch. We have seen him. You see, he's going to use those that hang around. He's going to work in you, and he's going to work through you. But you're going to have to stay with the stuff. It may look bad. It may seem horrible. It may be difficult. But hey, just keep hanging around. Because he's got some, you're going to see some things that nobody else will be able to see. You know, those people in church, I have noticed, you've got certain people in church that come to get out. They don't want to hang around. And you know, a lot of times, it's right near the end when God shows up. <laughs> so now they don't get to know, they don't get to see it and get in on it. They have to hear about it because they didn't hang around long enough. But I'm going to tell you something, I won't hang around. Because I don't want it to happen and somebody have to tell me about it. I want to be there and I want to experience it. Hang around. What is it keeps me hanging around? I can't get over what he put in me. I can't get over what he took out of me. And thank God he's got more he's going to do through us. I'll say it this way. Let me cap it off this way. If you'll just hang around. Are you hearing me? If you'll just hang around. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. No matter what happens. Don't let it change you. Don't let it shut you down. I've seen a lot of people because of this COVID just completely quit church. Fall out. But hey, child of God, there's too much left that's going to happen for you to shut down now. Right. Yeah. Just keep on hanging around. Because if you hang around until he comes around, because yeah. I promise you, he's going to show back up. <laughs> you won't be disappointed when it's all over. If you'll hang around till he comes back around, if you'll hang around, did you hear me, till he comes around, then you can go back around and bring other folks back around. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hang around till he comes around, you can go around and bring folks back around. A lot of folks need to be brought back around, but they can only bring, be brought back around by those who hang around. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now. You ain't going to be able to make a lot of difference in a situation like this. There's a lot of things happening in America that you're not going to be able to change. It's coming. Now, we talk about it, and we're mad about it, and we think maybe we might want to fight about it. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, this thing's too big for, for us. We, there's not a lot of, but I'm going to tell you what we can do. We can hang around long enough to see what God's going to do in spite of what this old world does because he's still got a lot he's going to do. He'll have the last say in every bit of it because he's the one that's doing the work. And all we got to do is just hang around. See, I didn't come, no, I didn't come here thinking I could make a whole lot of difference here tonight. I just figured I'd come over here and hang out with you. Huh? 
I mean, I crisscross this church. I've been in 70 churches every year. But I just, I just go out and hang around. I hang out. You say, why? Well, I just want to see what the Lord's going to do. I know I can't save nobody. I can't change a life. But I can hang out and just keep on doing what God has allowed me to do and hang on to watch what the outcome of it is. Oh, think about these ladies. What is it that kept them hanging around? Couldn't get over what he'd put in them, couldn't get over what he took out of them. God had much more to do through them if they'll just hang around. Now, y'all just keep coming and hanging. I bet you just hang out, hang around. But oh, he shows up with people that are determined to hang around. Let's stand by our heads. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come and be with your people tonight. Thank you, Lord, for those who have hung around through the years. Oh, that they should be able to strengthen us that we could hang around. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you made all of this possible. Your life, your death, and your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray.